Hey folks, it's a Matt once again, and we're about to another review, or I should say re-review, of John Wick. Now, the reason I'm doing this is, when I reviewed John Wick 2, I know Lion's Day were being dickholes to a lot of people, so I figured I took those reviews down and wanted to, A, do a better job of them, B, have better thumbnails, and C, Wait till John Wick 2 came on on Blu-ray, which I have over there, and rewatch it so that most of that review won't be just, Oh my god, it's actually, was it a piece of shit? It's actually a good sequel, in my opinion. But this also gives me another chance to talk about the original John Wick, and then the review of John Wick 2 will be after this. I hate this stupid fuck Rotten Tomatoes. Who gives a shit what they think? At times I bring it up, but to use as points. This is a film that in 2014 did not know much of anything about. A lot of times look on Wikipedia, other websites, look at what films are coming out that year, especially during the summer, and think, hmm, maybe that will be good, uh, that's probably going to suck. But this wasn't really on the horizon, or horizon, if I learn how to talk. And then I saw a picture, and it was a picture of Keanu Reeves with that shotgun type of weapon. I'm not sure what kind of weapon that's particularly called. And I'm like, whoa, I, I'm a fan of Keanu Reeves. I love Constantine. I love the movie Speed. I enjoy the two Bill and Ted movies. I'm a fan of the Matrix films, including the second and third one. I enjoy the Matrix trilogy a lot. Street Teens, I enjoy. So... I'm like, cool, he's doing another movie, and he's doing another action movie, he looks badass, what's this about? And then I saw the trailer, went, wow, this looks really cool, and saw this in the theater. It was a great theater experience, praised it when it came out, my favorite film of 2014, and then when a sequel was coming out, I'm like, man, this time I'm not even going to look at the trailer. And I went in cold turkey for that sequel. That was a, a very fun movie theater experience. But I definitely agree with these critics. Canary's best since The Matrix. I could get behind that. Although I thoroughly enjoyed Constant Constantine and Street Teens and The Matrix sequels. But this is easily one of my favorite Keanu Reeves films. A Wild and Bloody Ride by Jimmy O. I agree with that. Fred Topol of Crave Online, Cinema's next great badass is here. I definitely agree with that. And that's one of the big things about this is it's been a while since we've had a new kick-ass hero. And then you get Dread in this movie. And unfortunately, Dread did not do well. I know there's talks of a TV show or a Netflix show, but to me... I'm not going to think anything on it until Carl Urban is cast. Because so far he's not cast. And if he's not going to be Dread, then I don't give a shit about that show. I really don't. But this, it was cool to have a badass, kick-ass character again. And another version of the One Man Army movies. Because I love those kind of movies. Those are the kind of movies I grew up with. I mean, there's one and two right behind me. I mean, not only those two movies, but Commando and you know Chuck Norris films, like Invasion USA, where it's this badass motherfucker taking on dozens and dozens of people with his skills and with his vibe of badassness. And it was satisfying, and it was extremely well filmed. There was no shaky cam, there was no... Fucking wonky schizophrenic editing. There was no. I don't understand. This came out 2014, 
And why is it that one of the few films that actually learned lessons from this was its sequel on how to do action sequences? Although, I, Mad Max Fury Road, I can't say, did a lot of shaky cam or schizo editing. But then you did uh, Taken 2, you did Taken 3, you did... Actually, I, for, I forgot when the fuck those came out. Either way, you have those two films, you got Olivier Mediton, his whole filmography, you get Resident Evil, the final chapter. I'm like, why don't these guys learn from this on how to film action scenes and action sequences? But that's not the only reason why I enjoy this film. I've always been a fan of Keanu Reeves. He's always a guy that gets a lot of shit for his acting. But I think he's got presence. I think he's got that it factor. I really do. And he can play Ted Theodore Logan. But he can play Jack in the movie Speed. And I think he was a great Constantine. I enjoy that more than the show or the comics. The, well, to be fair, I haven't seen and read too much but Constantine the movie I've always enjoyed. I always felt that it was a very underrated film. I think he does a great job here. And he seems like an extremely nice guy. A genuinely nice guy who's gone through a lot of crap. Who's gone through hell. And even through all that he seemed like a very nice guy. And I give big props to him for that. I mean, I always remember the someone caught on the like a phone or something where he gave up his seat for a random stranger. Oh, take my seat! Didn't do it for any glory or anything. Just did it because he's a nice guy. So and he seems like one of those guys who's like a shy, soft-spoken guy, but he's just very cool, cool guy. And I always liked his per personality, his persona. And not only does he work, but I thought the rest of the cast works. Some that were in this and returned in the sequel. Uh, John Leguizamo, who works at this car shop. The little bit that he has, he's uh, not annoying. He's funny. Ian McShane, who I always thought was a talented actor, who runs the Continental Hotel. And you get almost as thinking that Maybe he's sort of a father figure to John Wick. Part of me wonders if he taught John Wick something back in the day, or there's definitely some history there. Also, what was his name? Let me see. He was in the sequel as well, the sort of the concierge, Lance Reddick. I liked him as a concierge. Hello, Mr. Wick. I thought he had that proper gentleman in this crazy business paying his respects to Mr. Wick as he goes into the, the hotel both in this and the second film. Um, even though he's listed in the credits I did not see him in the second film but he has a bit role in this David Patrick Kelly as a guy who him and his men clean up the dead bodies and they're paid in gold coins. It was nice to see David Patrick Kelly so, oh, from Commando, The Warriors, uh, 48 Hours. It was cool to see him again. As well as people who were just in this film. For example, Willem Dafoe as a guy who you think he's a hitman, but he's a... He is a hitman, but he's friends with John Wick. And also the villain. I thought the villain did a really good job. Michael... Nitvist, who sadly passed away, which is very sad. He passed away, I think, this year. I want to say it was lung cancer. I could be wrong, though. But I know he unfortunately passed away. And that sucks, because he... That's one thing I would give this over the second film. This definitely had a better villain. Because Michael Nickfist, he was a villain, but he was really funny. And sincerely funny. When he's talking to his son, he's like, 
with a pencil. With a fucking pencil. Or well, when he knows that his son's going to get killed, he rolls himself a joint and smokes it. At the end, when he's being chased in the car, and someone else is driving, and the guy, what's his name, Dean Winters, wants the gun, and Michael Niff is like, you want the gun? You want the gun? <laughs> like, just having fun, because he knows it's up shit creek. Or even when John Lodizamo bitch smacks the guy's son, and he's like, kill me now, or get the fuck out of my shop. And then Michael Nickfist calls, you, you struck my son, my ass, why? Oh. <laughs> um, he did such a great job. Uh, great villain. So he, he's going to be sadly missed, Michael Nickfist, so toast to him. And the premise was relatable. It was, it was a fun premise. These assholes go into this guy's house. They steal his car. They kill his puppy. They beat him up. But unfortunately, they pit the deadliest motherfucker in the world to do it to. And not only you killed his puppy, but the puppy was the last token of his dying wife who was sick in a hospital and she of course passed away and this puppy was the last gift from her so I mean it was a cute puppy but it was also you know, representing something that his wife gave him the last bits of her so to speak and you, know, you pissed off the one the wrong guy and then he goes one man army and I miss that in movies, man. I miss that. And the reason people don't do it is because it's too unrealistic. It's too unrealistic. A guy can't do all this. Too unrealistic. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about realism if you make it fun, exciting, entertaining, and not boring. And not only did this have excellent action sequences, like these assholes get into his apartment, and he's clearing house, doing these maneuvers, Gets the guy, breaks his neck when he punches the shit out of him, tosses the guy through a window. Later on, when he's in the club and he's getting people left and right, you know, knife underneath the chin, which always makes me think of the scene in Thomas Jane's The Punisher where you had the knife through the chin, you saw the knife in the mouth. I thought that was. I always like when someone does that. You know, that big motherfucker that he shoots and it pops in the head, popping everyone left and right in the head. At times he'll he'll shoot a guy, then reload. He actually reloads. Bam, bam, bam. He'll keep a guy down on the ground. He'll look at the sun. Then, and just, it's like a shark. It's like a shark. He's coming for you, and your ass is grass. He's now on the lawnmower. He's the maximum overdrive. <clears throat> and I love it. And different kinds of weapons. Like that. You that which I I wish he used more in the movie, but for a brief he has that shotgun type thing. <clears throat> it was cool that Daniel Bernhardt, who was in the Bloodsport sequels, he had a part in it. Kevin Nash has a blink and you miss it where he's sort of in front of this club and Keanu Reeves tells him to go home, take a night off, and Kevin Nash thanks him. So I'm like, wow, that's Kevin Nash. But not only is it because the action is well handled, it's frequent, it's no shaky cam, have a wide shot and actually let them show what they can do show the talent it's much more impressive that way like wow he did this and this so you're at home you rewind not because you're confused which if you have a lot of action films nowadays you rewind because you want to know what the fuck did i see wait i can't understand let me rewind it four fucking times to see it no i rewind it to be like wow that's really cool let me watch that action scene again let me watch that action scene in the club again oh wow cool let me look at that too let me look at the scene where he's driving a car and the guy rolls on the car and he's like, pew, 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 pew. 
or he turns with his car and goes out pop right in the head. But not only does the characters work, and the, the villain is pretty funny, sincerely, as well and entertaining, but the world it creates, the setup sort of has that old school iconic when it takes a sledgehammer and he's come back and forth between the father telling his son about the Baba Yaga, the boogeyman. No, oh, he's the one you sent to kill the fucking booty man. And it cuts to him sledgehamming this opening to his weapons. I once saw him kill people with a pencil. With a fucking pencil. Which in the next one we get to see that, which I thought was really cool. And the world of the Continental, and you can't have any business in the Continental, otherwise you get dealt with. Paying everybody in coins. Here's some coins for people who do this and clean up and you gotta go into this room you gotta put coins in like there's a vending machine to open the door and you see more than the sequel this world of assassins and it's interesting and it's a bit unique <clears throat> both these films are really good looking it's not cheap looking it's not hokey looking there's some nice lighting and the club scenes in here some nice lighting sequences and especially in the sequel you get in the the hall of mirrors so to speak the the humor it's sincerely funny like you said with the the villain when he takes those guys out in his house and you have the the cop saying oh noise complaint you working again john no i'm sorting some stuff out okay hey thank you God, i forgot the cop's name he, see, he calls him by his first name. <clears throat> like, I thought that was sincerely funny. Uh, again, when the, the villain's talking to John, why do you strike my son? May I ask why? Oh. <laughs> and that's another thing. I like how many of these people, when they hear John Wick, they're afraid. They're like, oh, shit. And I like that, because it's not typical. A lot of times, which can be fun in its own way, it's, oh, who's that guy? He's nothing. He's nobody. And the fun of that is, well, he's going to show you he is somebody. But as I seen the opposite of, oh, my God, everyone's scared of this guy. They know what this guy can do. He's a freight train, and we can't get out of the way. <clears throat> and, again, it makes it a little bit more unique and fun. Like I said, I like the Continental, the actors are like Ian McShane, Lance Reddick. Uh, the female assassin, uh, Adrian Pilecki, I thought she did fine for what she had to do. It's cool in this PC age we live in that he can actually have a fight with a woman and punch her out and beat the shit out of her in self-defense, mind you. But you did not do the fuck out of putting this sheet on her. Poof, poof. Because that's what would happen if someone's trying to kill you. It doesn't matter what they have between their legs. You don't want to punch them out because they're trying to kill you. PC has nothing in the way of survival. And then it fucks up people in the club like a badass. Fucking folks up one by one. I think it has some pretty decent camera work. Like it's going from like here to here, and he's taking people out one by one. Just insanity of the club, which I'm not going to go into detail because either you've seen the film or you should see the film. Um, even the church where he shoots this priest in the leg and you find out he's a bad priest and you know burns the people's money. I like the scene when he's caught that he's like, you know what, he stole that from me. He killed that from me. People are keep asking if I'm back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. And yeah, he's back with these two badass movies. Has a little fight with Danny Bernhardt. That cool shotgun fucks up this car. 
Grows the safe house, gets some sniper fun. Uh, Willem Dafoe unfortunately meets a bad fate because he helps John Wick. Uh, I, I love the scene where Miss Perkins, this character, gets her punishment for trying to kill John and she kills another person in that hotel and that's a big no-no. And like five, six guys shoot her all at the same time. And yeah, the, uh, the card is at the end. I love the idea that the bad guy is laughing and he's you know, fucking with the guy in front of him, Dean Winters. You want the gun? And just John using this car, shooting a guy while he's rolling on the car, shooting others, just a little fist fight in the rain. And it ends perfectly. Him getting another dog, going home. They walk off, boom, the movie ends. You did not need anything else. No other filler, just boom, it ends, it's done, the movie's over. So, I still feel this is one of the best action movies of the past 10 years. I feel strongly about that, I really do. It's one of the best badass action heroes we've gotten in the past 10 years, character-wise. And uh, Who'd have thought it'd be Keanu Reeves? But, you know, being a fan of Keanu Reeves, I'm like, you know what? I can stand by that. If it was Tom Hardy, I'd be like, nah, I'm not a fan of Tom Hardy. But this, I'm a fan of Keanu Reeves. I'm glad this and the second one, they got good reviews, good box office. I look forward to the third film. I really do. But yeah, I love this movie. I mean, it's a great flick. It's got humor. It's got action. Good characters. Never bored. I like the look of the film. The action scenes, like I said, are very well staged. Love the world that it was building up that you see more in the sequel. So, yeah, love John Wick. And next up, I'll talk about the worthy, very fun, very entertaining, kick ass sequel, John Wick Chapter 2. So, you may see these both uploaded on the same day. If so, see you in the next video. Later.